I'm Tony from freshcatmushrooms.com and I wanted to show you one of the easiest ways to grow mushrooms at home. Today we're going to be making a garden bed to grow oyster mushrooms on straw. The process is simply layering down straw and spawn and keeping it moist for about four to six weeks until the spawn can fully work its way through the straw and eventually fruit. Now for this garden bed we're not going to be pasteurizing the straw all we're going to be doing is layering it down and keeping it wet after we've inoculated it with the pre-made spawn. So this is the location we've chosen for the garden bed. And you want to make sure it's away from direct sunlight and it gets plenty of shade throughout the day. This is a place that won't dry out too quick or get too hot. So I'm going to start out by laying down some cardboard in the bed. And this is just simply to keep the weeds from growing right up through the straw right away. So what we want to do is layer down our straw and our spawn. So I'm going to put down a layer of straw, sprinkle on some spawn, probably do about two or three layers for this garden bed. So now that I've laid down a nice even layer of straw, I'm going to go ahead and uh, layer on some grain spawn. This here is about five pounds of blue oyster mushroom grain spawn. If you get any chunks like this, just go ahead and break them up. You don't have to worry too much about contamination or anything like that. Your spawn should already be pretty resistant to contamination and you're growing it outside, so you don't have to worry too much about that. So now we're going to go ahead and put down another layer of straw and another layer of spawn. So once you have all your spawn laid out in the bed, put down one more thin layer of straw on top, completely covering all the spawn. All right, so now we kind of have this layer cake of spawn and straw. So what's gonna happen over the next few weeks is the mycelium is gonna start to work its way through the straw and eventually fully colonize it. At that point, it can start to actually fruit mushrooms through the straw. During that time, we're gonna need to keep it moist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna soak down the straw with a hose and then cover it with a tarp just so that it can stay moist uh, throughout the next couple weeks while it's colonizing. I'm also going to go ahead and cut little slits all around the poly just so it has a chance to breathe a little bit. So now what we're going to do is just let this sit and colonize for the next three to four weeks, checking it periodically just to see how the spawn is making its way through the substrate and whether or not it's keeping moist. So if you notice it's drying out, we'll take the hose, lift off the poly and kind of wet it down just basically keeping an eye on it. Now the success of your mushroom garden is going to depend a lot on where you live and what time of year you're starting it. Obviously the ideal time to start this is in the spring and that way you might get two flushes, one kind of later in the spring and another one in the fall. This particular mushroom bed we're starting in mid-July so we're probably only going to get one fruiting. I'm hoping that's going to take about four to six weeks to colonize the bed and come September oyster mushrooms are going to start to naturally fruit through the straw. So it's been about a week and a half now since we've made this outdoor garden bed so I just kind of wanted to come here, pull the poly off and take a look at it and see how it's progressing. You can see that the mycelium is definitely starting to work its way through the straw. It's actually still quite moist as well since we had the tarp over it and for a week and a half or so the progression of mycelium through the straw is actually really strong. So really there's nothing we need to do here other than just let it continue to grow and to be honest it shouldn't be that long until we start to see mushroom pins especially at this rate of growth. So like I said this is the easiest way to grow mushrooms there's really nothing we need to do here at all so I'm just going to close it back up and continue to wait. I had the bed kind of split into two sections of poly. Um, this side over here was much more moist than this side which is a little bit damp but it's it's almost dry so if you look over this side, you can clearly see some oyster mushrooms um, fruiting through the straw. Uh, obviously these mushrooms don't look great and that's because they were sitting under the poly where they weren't getting uh, much fresh air at all. So they kept twisting and turning around the poly trying to get to the fresh air. So I think what I'm going to do for this side anyways is um, I'm going to leave the poly completely off and just let these mushrooms start to fruit through the straw. Um, let them continue to grow and hopefully grow into more kind of a normal cluster, um, more into normal looking mushrooms. 
but I think on this side I'm going to leave the poly and apply a little bit more moisture to the straw and I'll just pay closer attention to it because obviously these mushrooms are starting to fruit. And you can see too over here at the edge of the bed there's some other mushrooms growing. Now these aren't oyster mushrooms at all. Which just goes to show you that um, when you're growing mushrooms outside like this, you can easily have um, other species kind of invade the bed. So you really have to be sure that you know how to identify them, especially if you're going to be eating them. Luckily, oyster mushrooms are pretty easy to identify, and it's pretty easy to tell the difference between the mushrooms you're trying to grow and kind of an invasive species. So the oysters are continuing to fruit in this bed. Um, as you can see, the fungus gnats are already kind of at them. These ones that were pretty weird looking, a little bit past their dew. When you really get close and kind of look at this straw, you can see that there's little oyster pins. Nice blue oyster mushrooms growing pretty much everywhere throughout the entire bed. Which really isn't bad considering I really didn't have to do anything to this bed other than just let it sit. So the leaving the poly on the other half of the bed and keeping it moist for an extra couple days made a huge difference. First time I checked it there was no pins there whatsoever. Now three or four days later it's completely covered in pins. So now I'm just going to leave that poly off and over the next few days I should see a ton of oyster mushrooms growing all throughout this bed. So a couple days later and uh, here's the mushroom bed. As you can see they're definitely not the, like, the best looking mushrooms but they're definitely oyster mushrooms and they are growing absolutely everywhere in this bed. So we're gonna leave these mushrooms grow for another little bit and see how many flushes we can get until, until winter. So I think it's finally time to go ahead and harvest this mushroom garden bed for the first time. Now this bed really worked out great. You know, I really didn't put much effort into it all. I just kind of set it and forget it. And here we are and I'm harvesting uh, tons of blue oyster mushrooms. Now the mushrooms aren't entirely the best looking or as, as, as perfect as they would be if they would have been grown inside, but this took way less effort than growing them inside. So some of the mushrooms are a little older, some of the mushrooms are a little younger, but I'm going to go ahead and just harvest the entire bed and hopefully get another flush within two or three weeks. oyster mushrooms here that I can kind of clean up and add to any meal that I want. Now next time I do it, I'm probably going to go ahead and pick the mushrooms as they grow. So that way you can get them right at the peak time and they won't get, you know, a little older or the bugs won't get to them as much. So if you're looking for a really low effort way to grow mushrooms, you should definitely try this. Just adding some grain spawn to some unpasteurized straw in, a, you know, an appropriate area in your yard and you should have fresh oyster mushrooms you know, within a couple of months and you'll probably end up with way more oyster mushrooms than you even know what to do with. That's it for this video. I'm going to just cook all these mushrooms up, harvest the rest of them and hopefully get another flush or two in the coming months and into the fall. So thanks for watching. I'm Tony from FreshCatMushrooms.com and we'll see you next time.